Hello people, and welcome back to another City Skylines 2 video. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, you guys love these, and of course there is a whole selection of new maps out this week with the new DLC and Sid Eyes map pack. So plenty more tier list action to enjoy. Uh, let's get started today, shall we, with the Financial Districts map tier list. And the first one up here is Grey Waters, which is a boreal theme. And this, for me, is going to slide straight on into a healthy A tier. So Grey Waters is a boreal themed map with a 56% buildable area. It has all of its outside connections and all available resources. Those interested in its natural resources, you're going to find a pretty even split of all main resources here, with plenty of oil, ore and fertile land to make use of. You can make use of some wind in and around the coastlines is where you're going to find it. The terrain here is perhaps the most unique for any of the boreal maps that we've ever seen. It is a lot of shattered islands and a lot of kind of very harsh mountain ridges. Very unique boreal landscape. And for those looking to do some fishing, it is very much a shellfish party with spatterings of anchovy in the shallower areas. But welcome to Grey Waters, everyone. Um, what a distinctly pretty boreal map. Um, so, of course, I'm a huge boreal lover. It's by far, I think, my favourite theme. And... We've never had one like this before, it has to be said. You can really just kind of get a sense of it here. Um, so I didn't put this in must play just because of how, I guess, awkward some people could find its terrain. And I am probably one of those people. Um, I would find it hard to build on this map, I think. But either way, let's take a look at it. So we're greeted with custom interchanges, of course, which is always welcome. Uh, rather than having the horrible crap Y interchanges that we get with the base game. And these are present in several locations throughout the map. There's a nice little kind of stack Y interchange here. And with a little bit of layer going through it, which is just fantastic. Like, yes please, this is what we like when we start talking about new interchanges and designs that we find in the maps these days. There are no horrendous networks within the rail line over here. And we do arrive at some dead rail uh, with a little bit of factory uh, detail over here. So perhaps perfectly. Uh, ready here, and although interchange isn't the greatest, <laughs> but at least it's not functioning. It's a little bit short, uh, but you will find plenty of rail action uh, out in the map. And then as we approach over this side, the networks do get quite gnarly. We're getting some pretty tall bridges here. Now, I'm not against a tall bridge. It's really the gradient that tends to bother me. Uh, with the, we get some pretty insane stuff like this, but it's not too bad. You are also very far out to 81 tile radius here, so most people won't end up building this far out. And then you've also got some, there's actually a couple of these bridges, but really super curved highways. I don't mind those, and they kind of stand out a little bit on their own, but I think with a very dense, maybe boreal pine forest around the bottom of them, uh, you could definitely sort of settle in that one a little bit better. And then there's another one over here as well. We've just got some pretty steep bridge action, but again, it's not the worst in the world. We've seen worse networks. They're kind of nice and smooth and curvy as they come down, so... There is also another custom trumpet interchange uh, over this side where there is actually uh, another highway connection in relation to your starting tile, which is this one. So you could actually link the two highway systems together uh, pretty early, which is good for interconnectivity. And then you're going to find lots of classic vanilla detailings all over these little rolling boreal hills. So I think this map here is kind of ideal for constant boreal rural building. If you're looking to maybe set up like a county style build rather than one single large metropolis, this is a good shout for that. You could definitely perhaps isolate each of the islands into their own sort of theme and different districts in them, different buildings, and you can kind of come at it from that angle. But a good chunk of the map is really unfriendly for building uh, just because you've got these so much water and some pretty intense mountain ridges in some places, uh, especially where the highway starts cutting through. So I think any kind of significant metropolis is going to be a tough push on this one. Definitely rural county builds will be welcome there. But otherwise, Grey Waters, I think it is kind of unique and niche enough to keep it out of a must play. Um, not everyone's going to enjoy this, but definitely having so much water in a boreal theme leads to some interesting themes developing uh, within a build themselves. So it's a strong gate here for me. It may be higher or lower for you, but Grey Waters is certainly one of the better boreal maps that we've had from Colossal Order. Next up on the Financial Districts map tier list is the temperate map of Narrow Passage. And this, for me, I think falls just about into a must-play. So Narrow Passage is a temperate-themed map with a 49% buildable area. It has all of its outside connections and all available resources. 
those interested in the natural resources, you will find, again, a pretty even split of everything here. However, the oil in this map is almost entirely localized around the shorelines, which lends itself very well to a large coastal oil refinery build. That's something quite fun, especially with the oil drilling rig asset that you can use as well. Look into the wind, as you would expect, the mountain ridges and the shorelines hold the most windy spots. Checking out the terrain, there is a lot of buildable space within the two main landmasses and a ton of coastline, both ocean and inland lakes to make use of, uh, with two larger mountain ridges in the north and the south, but well within your 81 tile radiuses. And indeed, it is an absolute prawn party in this map with a tiny amount of anchovy available for those interested in the fishing. So why does this one fall into a must play? I think this one has a little bit of everything for everyone and it's very nicely designed. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Rosalind Peninsula from the Campus DLC, I think that one was, wasn't it? Kind of where it all sort of comes down in here and you've got the larger landmass with a lot of ocean. But either way, let's see what we're playing with. So we arrive at some very interesting um, network work here uh, with elevated rails coming over a little bit of a ditch and then it runs uh, parallel to the highway here before eventually crossing over it a little bit further down. So there's something that we all know that I like and that's layers of height. So I'm very, very happy indeed to see this sort of network stuff being developed. Um, so much more interesting than the horrible ones that we saw in Diamond Coast, if you remember those uh, way back when we did that video. Uh, so nice to see uh, the continual improvement of Colossal Order's map making skills. And then as we follow the highway down here, we do indeed approach the narrow passage of which the map is named after. And then we come into the starting tile, which is over here, which again is fed uh, by another long boy trumpet interchange. So again, it's nice to see more custom interchanges being introduced into the maps uh, before indeed the highway does head uh, off and out of the map this way. Uh, we then arrive at two really kind of large um, parallel mountain ridges that would be great for some rural building, a little bit of a nature reserve here. And then there's some uh, castle ruins on the top over here too. And it kind of looks like they've terraformed it here, so you've got a really kind of natural switchback road up to the top of the mountain. If you wanted to make use of that, this would be a great place for an observatory build looking down over your metropolis that fills the lowlands and the shorelines. Uh, very pretty map. Now coming more over this side, we run into some more industrial detailing with a couple of wrecked shipping containers and an abandoned factory. And then we also have another train line through here before we do arrive at some very buildable and friendly islands. Um, you could do some really nice things with these, either tourism or again a little nature reserve island out here kind of separate away from your main city would also work tremendously well. And hopping over to the other main landmass, we come into a little bay with an island and then there's an inland lake over here. Uh, and we have this really cool um, kind of horseshoe ridge line uh, within uh, the map itself. Again, you're scraping against your 81 tile boundary here, but for those that are playing with it, um, there's again some really nice rural opportunities to be building uh, at the foot of a really nice mountain ridge like this, so happy with that. And the main ocean mass itself is filled with varying different sizes and shapes of islands. So I think, you know, you've got mountains, you've got flatland, there's lakes, shoreline, islands, beaches. There's a whole little mix of different themes and sort of geographical features, I guess, here. You could definitely terraform this out here and let the lakes flow into one another and kind of expand that into like an ocean bay if you wanted to. So there's a terraforming opportunities. And then again, you are getting kind of more severe mountain ridges, but you're right on the edge of the map here. So it's not going to be any major issue uh, to be building in. But otherwise, Narrow Passage, in my opinion, could be one of the best, if not the best, uh, temperate maps we've got. I think it's certainly up there uh, with Azure Gulf. I really like the mountains here, the coastline, the networks. Everything's really fun to play with. And there's a lot of possibilities on this one. So, for those reasons alone, I'm going to put Narrow Passage as a must play. Next up in the financial tier list video is the Boreal Map River Terrace, and this for me falls just about into a B tier. So River Terrace is a Boreal themed map with a 64% buildable area. It has all available outside connections and all natural resources. Taking a look at the natural resources of the map, again, as with the other two maps we've looked at so far, there is plenty of each of your natural resources available, with some pretty significant stretches of oil and ore knocking around in this map. If you're interested in farming some wind, as always, against the coastlines and the major peaks is where you'll get the most use out of them. If you're interested in the terrain, it is very much just about rolling boreal hills. There's a lot of buildable land here, 
although how interesting that is remains up to you. We'll have a look at that in a second. And then taking a look at the fish, there's a happy mix of tuna, shellfish, and a little bit of salmon in there as well. But River Terrace, let's take a look first of all at the map's namesake, and this is definitely the River Terrace, isn't it? So this entire highway network is kind of like terraced up against this river here, and it kind of encompasses all this land. So the networks here are quite cool. Um, I like the way it kind of goes into bridge and then back to on the land and then we get some very big um, custom Y interchanges uh, on the highways, which is nice. It's nice to see this level of sort of effort and sort of infrastructure coming into the colossal order maps now. So much better than having the crap Y interchanges. But of course, we can't just grade a map on its interchanges alone. Uh, and then we come down to another uh, really big Y uh, intersection uh, down here on the highways, which actually do... Uh, feed your starting tile uh, up on this hill over here. So why is the map kind of middle of the road, almost bottom of the road? Um, it's because it's kind of an underwhelming boreal landscape. It's very much sort of just rolling hills, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with rolling hills maps, but I think if you're wanting to play boreal, you can certainly make a better choice than this. Um, Murky Coast, Oracle Lake are two that jump to mind immediately um, as better as kind of boreal experiences. So it's very flat, uh, which some people will enjoy. I totally appreciate that. And then you've got a lot more uh, industrial sort of factory detailing over here um, as the river uh, really opens up into some pretty interesting island shapes. You could definitely do something uh, with all these, especially with the shipping lanes passing through here too. And then as we move back towards the major landmass, you will stumble across uh, some classic vanilla castle detailing. And you can kind of just get an impression of the map from up here. It's... Just a little bit underwhelming for Boreal, I think. I like a mountain in my Boreal, kind of lots of forest, and I think it's quite a safe bet in terms of a, of a Boreal map. I can't really rank it as kind of C or crap map because there's definitely worse maps than this. And I think its interchanges and its networks definitely do keep it from falling into kind of a C tier level. I probably brought it up because of those. Uh, and yeah, just... Some, some pretty mad bridges. I do like the way that they've done this though. How they've got the, the node right in the middle. So the suspension arches are perfect as they slant down either side. Uh, that's really nice bridge building. So respect to the networks where it's due. And then as we move kind of east heading further down the river. We do get some slightly more interesting shapes here again. So there's lots of wide waterways. And then we do uh, once again arrive at uh, some nice castle deeds here. It has a wall, a couple of little turrets. And of course the main castle itself before some more industrial detailing. Uh, as you spill onto the edge of your 81 tiles. But there's kind of not too much to say about it. Like I said, there's definitely better boreal maps than this. There's definitely worse maps than this as well. So I think with relatively underwhelming landscapes, some fairly sensible river networks, and albeit some very nice network work, I will give the map that. It falls as the middle of the road for me. A decent boreal map, but there's certainly better ones that you can play than this. Next up on the Financial District's map tier list is a new desert map, a windblown coast, and this one for me falls into a must play. So windblown coast is the second of two desert maps that we've had from Colossal Order, and it does fall under the tropical theme. It has a 66% buildable area, all of its outside connections, and all available natural resources. Taking a look at the natural resources, you are greeted with plenty of oil and ore, although the ore is mostly around the mountain ridges, which could make building on it quite challenging, and there's not that much fertile land to make use of here. Taking a look at the wind, um, within the valleys you will actually make use of some wind, and of course the coastlines and the mountain ridges are where you'll find the most of it. Taking a look at the terrain, the north half of the map is entirely ocean, with the southern half being almost entirely mountains. And then there's some nice flatland and kind of big wide sweeping valleys for you to build major infrastructure within. And it is very much a shellfish and anchovy party uh, out in the ocean. But I am very, very happy to see another desert map from Colossal Order. Uh, we haven't had one since Sunset Harbour on the Desert Oasis map. And this is definitely an improvement over that. This is a much nicer terrain to work with. But let's check it out. So our starting tile again is introduced with... A wonderful little layered trumpet interchange. <laughs> That's so good. So much better. Thank you for that, Gloss Loader. Love these little custom interchanges and always happy to see a layer of height in there as well. Uh, you emerge out into your starting tile as we head towards the coastline where you will find the most interesting part about this map. Uh, Windblown Coast has some 
uh, fish art. Very strong Dubai vibes here, right? We kind of the Palm Islands and all the terraforming work that Dubai has done uh, out in the Gulf. Uh, you're getting some quite clearly inspired islands from that, I think. So you could get some really nice, luxurious, rich houses on here using perhaps the modern mid-century content creator pack to get all those expensive houses in. Of course, create your own theme if you're playing with mods. And then all these little fish islands. How cute. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful little idea. What a great use of uh, t like terrain. You could get some like seriously heavy kind of tourism, like rich, luxurious, kind of Middle Eastern desert vibes out here on this map. And then heading back inland, look at the mountain ranges. What wonderfully terraformed mountains they are, right? Much more interesting backdrop to look at. Um, I love a big mountain ridge within the city. I always kind of build toward it. I uh, really enjoy this. Uh, and we do have kind of a mixed biome, if you like. There is a little bit of kind of Greenland um, out here, kind of like a desert oasis again, if you like. Uh, over by the river where you'll find some fertile land. Uh, and a big boy elevated train network. This guy comes right out the valley uh, up here as it comes uh, out of the uh, edge of the map connection where, you, again, you emerge into another kind of desert flat there's just a lot of flat space here for building and um, all around really interesting kind of mountain terrains and then we've got some more networks over here which again are all sensible there's no horrific gradients uh, happening over this way although i think the way that bends off to the right just to go straight again is irritating me a bit but <laughs> that's just my personal off-center disorder i think and then it comes back uh, into the map here as it joins back up with the starting tile there is also some smaller uh, inland lakes around here as well against the highway and some classic uh, vanilla detailing uh, where you'll find a couple of dead train ends over here to make use of. And then there is also a couple more mountain ridges over the hill and far away where you'll also find a little bit more grassland around here. So you could definitely kind of play into the fact of building towns around the lakes and the shoreline and keeping it as like kind of desert oasis and then as you move deeper into the desert it is definitely... Um, a little bit more rural and you could definitely bring in some rural desert towns into this kind of a little water tower in the foreground and yeah really unique landscapes to play with i love the fact that we've got another desert map and um, i always like seeing uh, biomes and especially mixed use biomes as well uh, really help tie uh, this map together as a pretty decent one for me but otherwise windblown coast definitely one of the more interesting and beautiful tropical maps that colossal order have given us and i'm a huge lover of the kind of fish island art there. Just, I would love to see uh, what people do with that. I'm hoping we get some screenshots in the Discord from some of you. But, I hope you agree. Definitely a must play this one. Really interesting, pretty tropical map to have fun with. So the last map on the tier list here today is Wyvern Pass. Now this one is gonna be a must play for some and it's gonna be a crap map for others. And because of that, I can't really decide where it falls for me. So it's going to go middle of the road. So Wyvern Pass is a tropical themed map with a 66% buildable area. It has all of its outside connections and all available natural resources. Those interested in the natural resources, you will find a ton of ore here. However, all of it is almost always on a mountain ridge, which means building on it is going to be extremely hard. The wind within the map is pretty much on top of the mountains. You'll get pretty much no wind down within the canyon. It's terrain. I think we can give this map the title of the most unique terrain. I think you can get an impression of here from the topography lines and the, the gradients and stuff, but we'll see it in a second. Then the fishing industry. Again, very much a shellfish party with a little bit of uh, salmon and tuna knocking about in the rivers. But otherwise, welcome to Wyvern Pass, everyone. So the first thing that comes to mind is the Grand Canyon, isn't it? We are playing with some huge, huge canyons here. And um, for anyone that is familiar with the workshop, uh, Teddy Radko recently made a map called the Great Divide that was based off of the Grand Canyon. And it's very similar to this, right? Huge, huge, deeply cut uh, sort of river canyons that flow right through the middle of the map. Uh, it's also a mixed biome as well. You've got desert down on the bottom and uh, grass and coarse forest up on the top of the hills. And I hope you can kind of sympathize here. <laughs> this is a, a really hard map to rate. Um, some people will love this and be like, this is the best map ever. I could imagine so many different builds um, on this sort of map. And then other people would have no idea how to approach this. I think I'm more in that camp. I can't envision what I would build here. 
So your starting tile is here, where you have the end of the highway and a very unique starting tile to play with. As it drops quite literally um, off of a cliff face over this side. Uh, before the highway does indeed merge into yet again another custom trumpet interchange. So that's very nice to see as always of course. Uh, and then I believe there is actually a waterfall over here as well. So we do have an inland lake that's very much on top of the mountain. Uh, and then it flows down here. So I'm really happy with the waterfall. I love that kind of natural geographical feature. I always appreciate stuff like that within a map. So I'm happy with this here. And then this of course spills downhill again uh, as it goes down into the bottom of the canyon. And across the map you're going to find all your regular favourite vanilla detailing palettes, including old factories. And I like the way they're using the castles now. They're actually like proper old castle facilities with like turrets and walls, a little cemetery in here now. They're not just like random castles in the middle of nowhere with nothing else around them. So I'm happy with that. Heading a little further west in the map, the River Canyon does kind of open up into your sea connection um, out here. And again, you could kind of imagine building a port here. You're going to get very dramatic landscapes with whatever you build, especially on this island over here, again, where there's more um, castle detailing that kind of looks back over uh, the whole map as a whole. And they really did go ham with the castle detailing on this map. This one's almost like a little heart almost. It's quite cute. I like that. And then there's lots of abandoned factories knocking about over here as well um, as you merge back into your starting tile. So we do get some pretty insane <laughs> rail networks here. I understand they're crossing a canyon. I just think it, need, it needs like a suspension arch maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not a bridge engineer. But uh, something a little bit off about it I think. I'm sure there is bridges like this somewhere in the world. But uh, yeah, it's it's there for you to play with at least. And you imagine as you cross over the canyon, almost all of your networks are going to look like this, which would be, albeit a very unique aesthetic, I think, for a city. It's probably not one for me. Um, because I tend to build major metropolis areas and I love a distinct skyline in my city and all that sort of stuff that the people that watch me know, I just can't imagine a metropolis on the edge of cliff faces like this. I don't really think they're built like that, are they, for erosion purposes? They would never build anything seriously big up here, which does open up to a build for a county or a rural map if you wanted to take it in that direction. But I think any kind of major metropolis would struggle to fit in authentically in this landscape. But otherwise, that's it for Wyvern Pass. Really unique tropical map. Again, this could be must play for some. I can totally see why it could. It's a super unique landscape. And on the flip side of that coin, it will fall into crap map for some people as well, just because they'd have no idea how to approach this, what they would build, and just don't like the terrain and the funky networks that would generate here. But please let me know what you think of Wyvern Pass down below. I'd be really interested to see what everyone thinks of this one. But for me, it's going to be a middle of the road beta. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, likes, comments, and shares below really do help me out. Equally as much, if you haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. Uh, please do get down in the comments below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of these rankings. I'm always interested to see how people's opinions differ across things like this. Of course, we've all got our own personal tastes and preferences. And I will say that the maps from Colossal Order are certainly getting better. We haven't ranked a crap map for a good while now, I think, since the, the Snowfall DLC, when we had Winter Hills, was the last crap map. Um, so yeah, it's good. I'm happy to see better maps being made. It's always nice. It definitely gives uh, people that don't have access to the workshop or our console friends much more variation in landscapes to play with, because of course the workshop is just a fantastic treasure trove of maps. Please do expect more tearless content this week with Sid Eye's new content creator map pack. Of course, we'll rank those as well and see what we all think of them. But I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.